the uh, so so here, here here you can see this process. So when you when you when you upload a thing to the to the swarm, it it basically finds its way to the to the node that's closest in its address to the to the chunks address. It's using the same type of you know hash based, like key based uh, address space and and the basic Kademlia um, structure that that you the usual the distributed uh, hash tables use as as their uh, routing. Uh, uh, Overlay topology. So, sorry, sorry to drill through this. It's just the, the it's just it's just to kind of set set the context of how 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 in what ways swarm is different. Uh, the the other very important part is that swarm is is is, is set out like to concentrate on on uh, on solving the, the the incentives, which makes such a such distributed file uh, sharing like content delivery systems self-sustaining and, and sustainable. And for that, we basically concentrated on two use cases. Like one is to incentivize bandwidth, or other words, incentivize the, the smooth operation of, of, of retrieval. And the other one is, is, is storage, in, sorry, storage uh, uh, incentives, which basically makes sure that if you, if you really want to store something, it's not going to be lost. And these are very different use cases. So, so we, we, we usually um, um, discuss them in like in two sections. Uh, one, one, one. I, I don't don't really want to go into this like the the, the, the theory of it. It's just I mentioned it because that's that we, we put a lot of effort into into coming up with a kind of comprehensive and, and realistic story how to how we solve this. Uh, we call this system swap swear and swindle, a kind of playful. Uh, Phrase, and it, this captures um, the the. Sorry, this this slide is kind of just annoying. <laughs> it doesn't give you anything, right? I'm just like playing around. With it. So the the swap protocol is 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 the is the part that uh, does the the benefit accounting. That's the easier part. It's based on the idea that you have peer to peer accounting of how much traffic goes through uh, through to, to to your peers. So you you basically count how count the give and take, you give a scorecard with your peers, and you settle, uh, um, you know, outstanding, if, if, if the balance is too uh, tilted, then you settle the outstanding amount with sending a check, like the, the one that's in debt, it sends a check to the other one, to the other uh, um, uh, party. And you can even hold out on checks, because the check uh, caching system is cumulative, so you only need to check the last check. And that's, that's why it's you can save on transaction costs uh, the more you trust your uh, your peers. So your reputation system can further uh, do some savings. So th this 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 bit of the of the of the incentivization is relatively easy. the the other the other part is the fa the, the storage insurance is um, is a bit more complex because it's 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 not a good uh, the same way as as the bandwidth which you can like directly settle because you you know that certain data comes through you so the guy did their job, like delivering something. However, with the, with the file storage, it's more complex because you need to basically buy a promise. And the way, way we do it is, is uh, along the lines of syncing, when you upload something to the, to the network, you, you, uh, you swap uh, these chunks of, of data with, with receipts. So uh, parties that accept uh, uh, chunks for storage, they, they receipt it. If, and if they registered nodes on the swarm, which means that they put up a, a, um, a security deposit as, as a stake that they, they hold on the line. So if they misbehave um, according to the rules, uh, they, they, they lose that stake. So what is misbehaving here? Misbehaving is obviously that if you give a receipt, then you, you, you promise that you, you will have that content. So anyone later at a later date with a valid receipt about a chunk can litigate on the blockchain against the, uh, the offending party. Uh, there's, there's a lot of subtleties in this, in this game, but the main, the main point is that here the blockchain is really used as a, as a last resort judge. Most of the interactions in the incentive system are done on a, on a like, local, with local interactions, like with the, with the swap accounting protocol. It's like really peer to peer, and with, even with the with the storage insurance, it's very it's very interesting because uh, 
the way it works is that the first person, you, when you upload the, the chunk, the first person you give it to, they already give you a receipt. And uh, you don't need to care like who, who the ultimate uh, uh, so, uh, target and the ultimate storer of that content will be, because all you need to do is, is to litigate with that receipt. And that guy has two options. If, you, if, 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 you, if, you're, a, if you're first person that you got a, a new chunk to store, but you, you, you obviously forwarded it to, to this destination, then you have an option to, to finger point to, to the person that you, that you gave it to. And that that's, that's kind of sol solution has, has many um, um, advantages, namely that basically uh, storage insurance is immediately settled, or also on the, uh, so it allows for, uh, uh, the users of Swarm to upload and disappear. That's, that's the scenario we call it. So, which means that you can basically make sure that the content that you really want to store, for example, your birth certificate or um, a photo album of your, of your grandmother that you only really want to watch every 10 years, but then you really need to have it, then you can basically um, uh, make sure that, that uh, our, uh, can incentivize to, 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 to have this data storage. Now, uh, just, just to round off, because th this is just to, uh, uh, have some, uh, like to, to generate some interest, really. The, the, what I really want to talk about is that uh, we, we're starting to, in, in order to implement these, these relatively complex protocols, for example, the, the, the proof of custody and, um, and, and the, the, the proof of custody that we use for, for to, to, to prove that you have certain content without necessarily downloading it, uh, there's, there's, a lot, there's a lot of interesting, uh, interesting protocols which, uh, which we need to test. And, and for, for also, also you need to test like benchmark uh, retrieval latencies and benchmark you know, correctness and, and the spreading of, this, of, of the chunks in, with the syncing protocol. And in, in order to have that, I, you know, we faced with, with the problem that we really needed to have some sort of you know, principled way of testing this because these are very complex scenarios like many nodes, uh, they all have like network issues, etc. So we set out to, to see whether we can uh, use an off-the-shelf, some, some sort of off-the-shelf off the uh, network simulation framework. And we, f we found quite disappointing results that n nothing really suited our needs. So uh, I started writing basically such a, such a network simulation framework. And that's what I'm going to continue hack, to hack on uh, today. And so if, if anyone is interested in that, um, you know, they can, they can help, help out. The, the, the next step in this, in this game is, sorry, I just want to show you something here. Uh, this, is a, this is a little demo of, 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 a, of one, one vestige of, of, uh, of, the, of the network simulation. Uh, Package that I'm writing is a is a is a it, it has a restful resourceful restful API, which uh, for, among others can serve a vis visualization uh, UX. Vis visualization UX uses a JavaScript uh, library called Cytoscape, which can do dynamic uh, uh, graph visualizations. And so this is kind of just a just a quick uh, show of how it's done. So it, Looks like this. Do you see? Oh, you don't see anything, damn it. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> it's not gonna be very, very spectacular. <laughs> so you, 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 yeah, I don't know. So you can see like little, uh, little orange hexagons there as nodes and, and, uh, and there's some, uh, yeah, it's not very helpful. <laughs> Okay, so so, the, so you, you see here you see basically a, a connectivity uh, simulation of 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 a, of a little toy network like a simulation simulated network. This is this is just to you know, to show you one aspect of the of the whole thing. Obviously, the the real need for this simulation framework is to have like a, mo a network model where you can. Uh, Im imitate uh, the node's behavior and, and their protocol uh, conformant communication without actually spawning up 
nodes and, and, and you know, doing, doing all the server stuff and, and doing all the network traffic. And um, the, the, the nice thing about this is that you can even, with, with, with the simulated message pipes that we have in the in the in the in the in the in process uh, network simulation, you can even mimic um, uh, you know bad internet connections. You can have um, uh, things like. Um, uh, Particular st probabilistic model of of net, net of node dropouts, for example, you can have uh, um, you know you can you can uh, simulate a network contention in like network connection contention, and you know connection drops, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And the nice thing about this is that the the way I the way I wrote it is is that you have various network adapters, uh, which are independent of the basic network model that the simulation and the testing, uh, testing harnesses sits on. So, uh, for example, you can have the same uh, network model running a, a, a remote or local Docker cluster. And for, so, so this has very interesting consequences. It means that you can, you can run a test scenario on, on, a, on, on a Docker cluster and or, or, or any kind of you know remote node, and basically set the parameters of, of like the you know the network uh, latency parameters uh, gathered from from this experiment, and then take take those parameters over to the simulated network, and and you know have the simulation based on on you know real real world uh, data, or um, or the other way around. The the nice thing is that it's this, this simulation framework works with an eventer. Like it has input input trigger events and output events, and uh, the output events can be saved. Like it is basically a journal journal of network events. Like in the case of just connectivity events, think of it as the events are like you know node A comes on at, at this timestamp, and then node A drops off at this timestamp. Node A connects to B at this uh, this time, and etc. etc. Of course, these events can be more sophisticated. For example, it can be like when a message is sent, or a message is, uh, is, uh, is, is received, or, or even very, very high level, like you know, a file is uploaded and a file is, is downloaded, so things like this. Uh, the, the point is that these event streams can be, can be independently saved again from, from the network type, so, which means that real-world scenarios in, in, in like a real network can, can be uh, saved and replayed in a replayed in a in a simulated environment and the other way around so for example you can generate uh, with with a simulation you can generate um, certain um, configurations uh, of you know how what what chunks are stored at what at which node and for example that snapshot is can be can be regenerated in the real world uh, environment um, at least that's the plan. I mean, a lot of lot of this stuff is not implemented yet. It's just a bit of a, a dream. But the, the main skeleton is is done, and you know it's a little bit immature. I mean, I'm working on it as we speak. But the the again the takeaway message here is that we really really need this this type of framework to to test, you know, the, the sophisticated uh, you know protocol. Um, yeah, mm, Algorithms that 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 we we planning with with Swarm, among others the the, the this, this this litigation um, um, and and like basically the storage incentives, um, the the erasure coding scan and repair uh, functionality, the uh, the the proof of custody uh, calculation which is is also written in in the second orange paper. I don't know if you if you know that we, we published two two papers. Uh, relating to these incentives, and the second paper describes a, an interesting um, way how to how to calculate um, a proof of custody for a really uh, like in a scalable way for a for a potentially very big, uh, very large data collection, and prove prove the integrity of that to uh, arbitrary uh, arbitrary uh, security, and. <coughs> And so, so all these all these uh, um, plans that we have for for like these these network algorithms would would really benefit from from having such a framework, which would would make it almost like a 
you know, it's it's like a kids play basically to to to, to start up a simulation and 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 uh, and launch launch those uh, you know tests for for the particular protocol and see how they behave in the in the wild and with with the, with the with the whole uh, big uh, network. Um, I, I mean, my hope is that this this same simulation framework can also be used uh, with with other you know underlying. Uh, uh, networks, for example, the IPFS leap peer-to-peer. -peer. I, I wanna, I wanna, uh, at some point, have a bridge to that as well. And so, hopefully, hopefully, we can both use these these tools. Um, so, the the next step for us is um, that's what I, I hope to be working on with Vlad uh, today and tomorrow, maybe, is to put our Whisper uh, protocol. On, on this simulation framework and and see uh, see what you know what what kind of tests we can squeeze out of this uh, already at, the, at this stage. So if anyone's interested in this, or even if you guys, because like to be honest, the, the 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 biggest bottleneck for me is is the is the is the JavaScript frame, uh, UX itself because you know I'm very <laughs> I'm very bad at JavaScript and like all this UX stuff. So if anyone is inclined to help with that. Or of course, of course, you are also very welcome to help out with the Go code uh, for the simulation network. But so, if anyone is 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 interested or inspired by this, then please come to us and and you know have a conversation or, or just you know, just have a look at the at what we have. Thank you, guys. <laughs>